Hi, I'm Jeff, and uh, I'm going to show you how to build this robot today. We're using this as a tool to teach about machine learning and robotics, but you could use it for all kinds of things. Uh, if you had your own project, you were trying to build a Mars rover or something like that, this would be a nice platform for you to start with. Um, this is really simple. It's a straightforward build. It's all 3D printed parts with a few bits of electronics here and there. Um, and it's adaptable if you have you know, slightly different motors or slightly different parts. Um, you can just print out the parts you need and put them together. Uh, and if you have your own special need for a particular motor or a different sensor, it's really easy for you to make your own parts that are going to fit in with this platform uh, to do exactly what you need. So we're going to start from a pile of parts, nuts and bolts, electronics. We're going to go through the whole process and put it all together and get it to the point where it's ready for you to put the software on it and, uh, and start doing your coding. Um, so let's get rolling. All right, let's start by talking about the pieces that we're going to need to use to build this thing. Um, these are the 3D printed parts. You can find a link to these parts uh, on the GitHub site and in the description of the, the video. And uh, there's nothing really complicated here. The largest part is the frame, and so uh, you're going to need a printer that's got um, a big enough work area that can print a part that's about six inches long. Uh, all the rest of these parts are small, and if you've got to do it in a couple batches or anything like that, you know, there's, there's no problem. The um, stock for the sensor is pretty long. This prints vertically pretty well, um, so, you know, you're going to need that much height, but, you know. Um, now, these parts are pretty much right as they come off the printer. Uh, the exception would be, um, I've drilled out a couple of holes. So on the mounting studs for the, uh, the, the computer that runs this thing, um, I drilled these out after. I didn't incorporate the holes into the design because uh, people's printers are a little bit different, especially if they're not calibrated that well. Sometimes holes are under or oversized. And um, so I left the, the mounting studs without the holes. Now you can either drill into these if you have exactly the right sized bit, or rather just undersized for the hardware that you're using, and then thread right into the plastic. But I don't really like to do that. I prefer to drill straight through to the underside and then use a nut on the backside. That gives you a, a better mount and it's more reusable. If you thread directly into the plastic, you're only gonna get that bolt to go in and out a couple times before you rip out those threads. And uh, you know, and then you're going up a size in your hardware or whatever. So I try to avoid that. So you can drill these out. Um, and uh, if any of the other holes are a little bit undersized for you and your printer, just run a drill bit through them uh, and clean them up. You've got motor mounts. These are going to hold the little steppers to drive the wheels. Um, they're, they have an inset. Uh, we'll talk about the steppers in a minute, but these are inset with just the right shape so the motor slots in just one way and the hardware holds it in place. Um, you've got a little roller wheel here. This is a ball caster. If you can't get these, um, you can 3D print a part that's basically a, a non-moving replacement and this bolts on the front just like this does. This will work fine on smooth surfaces like a wood floor or linoleum or something like that, um, but this isn't gonna work on carpet. So, you know, you're slightly more limited in where you can drive the robot if you use one of these, but it, other than that, it works fine. Uh, these are the wheels. They have an integrated nut trap, and what that means is you put a little uh, nut down in the slot here and run a bolt in through the hole, and that gives a nice tight grip. So when you tighten the bolt, it uh, grips onto the, the shaft of the motor. Um, I'll show you how to put the nut in a little bit later. And then on the sensor stock here, um, there is not a, um, a hole in the model. I just used a, a drill bit here and sort of didn't follow my own advice there. I threaded the bolt uh, right into the plastic. That works well enough um, for this application. So to do that, drill it out a little bit smaller than the size of the hardware you're using. I'm using a, an M3 bolt here. Um, drill it out a little bit small, start it to thread in, and either go nice and slow so the threads cut into the plastic, or what I like to do is I like to heat the head of the bolt with a soldering iron, and that will warm up the bolt, deform the plastic, and then when you thread it in, the plastic being all gooey will kind of meld around the, the threads and, and give you a nice um, set of threads that you can wind into and then take back out later on. That works pretty well. Okay, that's it for the 3D printed parts. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Let's talk about the electronics. Now, for this build, we're gonna use a Raspberry Pi Zero W. Uh, it's about 10 bucks on Adafruit or 15 bucks, you know, some other places. These things are amazing. Um, tiny, give you all the connectivity you need. 
Um, we're going to use this little laser rangefinder sensor. This comes from SparkFun. It's a VL53L1X. Um, it's got I2C connectors on the sides, and it's got also it's got solder pads here, so you can attach wires if you don't want to use the plug connectors. Um, this uses a little laser beam to you know get you a distance reading, and that's going to be you know part of our um, our machine learning project. Uh, these things are awesome. Um, and then you're going to need some wires. Um, there's nothing really special going on here um, with our wiring, except that uh, most of the connectivity I'm using these. Uh, female to female jumper wires. Uh, you can get these on Amazon or from Adafruit or you know any number of other places. Um, you know, don't get super short ones. Um, a little bit of extra length is no big deal. You can wrap it over itself to take up the slack. Um, but you're going to need these to connect the motors to the board and the sensor and all that kind of stuff. Um, the only wire we're going to have to make is uh, this one here. I'm going to walk through this with you. Um, this is a one to three split here because the, the um, Raspberry Pi doesn't have enough uh, power outputs to power all of our stepper motors, so we make one of these to split the power um, out to the motors. I'll show you how to make that. And uh, I'm dropping parts here. Um, I think the only other thing is the motors that are actually going to drive the thing around and move the sensor. Now for this build, we're doing it on the cheap. Um, we're using these geared stepper motors. Now if you go on Amazon, you can buy a five pack like this that has five of these motors and five of these little driver boards to make a move for like $15. It's like crazy inexpensive. Um, anyway, these um, motors plug into these boards and then the boards connect onto the Raspberry Pi and that drives the motor. So we're gonna use three of these, one for each wheel and then one to move the sensor on the front. All right, so let's start by putting the um, motors in the brackets and mounting that stuff up on the frame, getting the Raspberry Pi on here. And, um, and after we sort of get all that stuff sorted out, then we can do the wiring. All right, so first we're gonna get the motors uh, into the motor mounts. So if you take a look at the mount, you can see that there's an indentation in the shape of the faceplate of the motor. So if you take this, it's gonna pop right in here. And if your printer's tuned up pretty well, it's gonna pop right into the slot and it's not gonna move around too much. So that's handy. And then um, you can take uh, nuts and bolts and use these to hold the motor in place. Now, uh, for all of the work that I'm doing here, I'm using M3 hardware, because I tend to keep it on hand. And uh, it's easy for me to work with. They're small, but they're still strong. Um, an assortment like this is gonna cost you 10 or 15 bucks. Um, and it's got every size that you're going to need to use. So I'm not going to go through and rattle off every size of every bolt that I'm using. It's not really that fixed. Um, you know, you can kind of figure that out for yourself, but also you don't have to use this hardware at all. Um, you can scavenge uh, hardware from uh, old electronics. Um, you know, if you've got a random nut and bolt jar like a lot of us do at home, you can use those. Um, you can use hardware that's smaller. Um, you can use hardware that's bigger, but then you might have to drill out some of the holes. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, you just need parts that are going to hold all this stuff in place and not let things move around, okay? So, uh, nuts and bolts, these are probably, you know, five millimeter long, uh, maybe a little bit longer. I got a nut on each one, motor's held in place nice and tight, it's not going anywhere, okay? First one done, I'll go do the other one and then we'll move on to uh, the next part. So next we're going to put the Raspberry Pi onto the frame. Um, now before you can mount this on, you're going to need to drill these holes out. Um, so, you know, find a drill bit that's uh, just slightly larger than the hardware that you're using. Um, you know, again, I'm using M3 hardware. So let's take a look at my drill index here. Uh, this is a uh, eighth inch drill bit. It's about the right size. Um, you know where you can go up an extra size. Uh, if you go too big, you might pop off these posts. So just be a little bit careful there. Um, you know, but, um, you know, find the one that uh, works well for you, drill those posts out, and uh, then you can get bolts down through them. Now, when you're putting the Raspberry Pi on, um, you know, it's not the end of the world if you get it going backwards, but it's going to make wiring harder, and it's going to be harder for you to plug the power in, because the powers are back here, the power connectors, rather. So, have the power connectors, the little micro USB uh, face facing towards the back, or, you know, by this little flange here that we're going to use to mount the battery, and then get the pin header facing that way, that way. 
and um, pop a couple of bolts in. So I'm just gonna look through my collection here and find some that are long enough to go all the way down through. Um, that's not bad, that's probably a little long, um, but as long as it's not gonna drag on the ground, that's just fine. Um, let me swap that out for a slightly shorter one and see if that works. Um, yep, that's actually just barely long enough to get some threads on there. So I'll use a couple of those to hold it in place. Now you can, you can uh, use all four mounting holes if you want, but um, one on each diagonal corner uh, is going to be plenty to hold this in place. So we'll pop those on and um, then we'll move on to mounting on the, the wheel motors, I think. All right, so at this point you should have a couple of stepper motors mounted up in their brackets and you've got the frame with the Raspberry Pi on it. Um, now for this next step, the, the uh, mounting holes uh, on the bottom of the motor brackets, they're a little bit hard to access because of where the stepper is and um, you know, this is just sort of me iterating the design. I made these brackets and I didn't really think about the accessibility of those holes. Rather than, you know, change it now, I'm just gonna suck it up and put the bolts in. Um, all it means is they're a little bit tight um, you know, you can kind of pop them in here and, uh, you know, they're just not quite as accessible and you're not going to be able to get an Allen wrench on the end of that. Um, but most of these bolts for this build, I'm doing finger tight anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Um, so I would put the bolts in first, right? And then, um, what you want to do is, uh, just pop them down through the holes like that. And then if you can get a finger down in there to hold the bolt in place, um, that sort of helps to um, then get the nut started, because the bolt's not gonna walk around on you. Um, so I'll just sort of start this with my fingers, and like that. And then I'll get a finger on the other one. This time I can flip it over, show you what that looks like. And just get the nut on there, finger tight. Now, if you've got your finger on the underside of, you know, you get it on the, the head of the bolt, um, that's usually enough friction to keep it from rotating. So you can just grab this with a set of needleless pliers, or if you happen to have the, um, the wrench that's the right size for an M3 nut, which I don't have handy, um, you can use that. But, you know, again, we're not uh, holding an aircraft together here. We're just sort of, um, you know, putting together a little robot that's gonna zip around on the floor. So actually, it's not even gonna zip, it's more gonna like stumble. Um, you know, so if the fasteners aren't super, super tight, that's not a big deal. Now, um, the holes in the frame are a little bit oversized, so you can see the way that I put that in, uh, let's see if I can get a good angle. You can see this is a little crooked. Um, so I just didn't straighten it out very well. So I can probably nudge this back into place. It's a little tight, so I'm just gonna loosen this slightly. Adjust this so that the uh, bracket is parallel, uh, straight on the frame and then tighten these nuts back up. Um, otherwise, the wheels aren't gonna rotate um, you know, in plane with the, the frame. It's gonna be kinda crooked, and it's not gonna move as well. So, um, you know, but little assembly details like that, just tweak them as you go, no big deal. I'm gonna pop the other one on the other side here, and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. All right, we're moving right along. We got both, both motors mounted up, we got the, the brain, um, let's take care of these wires before we move on uh, to the next part. <clears throat> now, um, these motors, the, the, um, there's not a lot of clearance between the bottom of the motor. That's, I'm sorry, I'm blocking your view there. There's not a lot of clearance between the bottom of the motor and the Raspberry Pi. But if you flatten out these wires, you can kind of slip them in underneath. Um, and if you do that, it's gonna get these wires out of the way so that you don't need to do a whole lot of you know, cable management like with zip ties or anything. So see how if you're, if you're careful you can tuck the wires underneath. You can actually go over the motor and then tuck them through again. You might have to move the little wire tie out of the way there. But uh, now you've got the wire exiting toward the, um, uh, where the stepper drivers, the little um, Driver boards are gonna be mounted, and most of the slack is taken up by wrapping it around the motor. So I'll do the other one. Something else I wanted to talk just briefly about while I'm, while I'm doing the wiring here is um, the assembly or the design of this frame. Um, I mentioned before it's modular. Um, I really like doing that with 3D printed parts. It would probably be uh, not too hard to make a frame for this robot that was one piece that would mount up uh, you know, the brain and the motors and all the parts. Um, but the thing is, that wouldn't be as flexible. Uh, and by flexible, I mean versatile. Uh, 
And um, if there are any of the parts that didn't fit just right, um, like if I had uh, made the motor mount and I wanted to move one of the mounting holes or I wanted to hold the motor up a little bit higher, I'd have to reprint the whole frame if it was one piece. But if you make the design modular like this where it's held together with nuts and bolts, you can swap out parts anytime you want. If you want to improve something, you can design and print out that new part. Um, and that's an opportunity for you guys out there uh, if you have an idea of how some of these parts might be better, like if you wanted to move the mounting holes for the brackets or you wanted to add a mount for an additional sensor. Um, that's something that you guys can do and then contribute it back to the project. So don't be afraid to hack on this hardware, modify the parts, and if you come up with something cool, send it back in and you know if, um, if it's something that might benefit others, maybe we can incorporate that into the project. Um, Okay, next we're going to mount either the ball caster um, or the front sled as well as the mount that's going to hold um, the sensor motor. Here it is. Now, um, on the front of the frame here, there's these two holes. Now, the ball caster and the little skid have the same uh, mount layout, right? So either one of these will go on the underside. And then the same bolts that hold that in place line up with the, um, the holes on the motor mount here. So we're gonna pass a bolt down through the top, through the frame, through the caster on the bottom, put a nut on it, and hold it all together. So let's pop this bolt back in. Get a nut on the bottom. Like that. And then do the other side. Just like this. <clears throat> now in this case it's pretty accessible so I'm going to hold the nut on the bottom with my finger and then I'm going to use my Allen wrench here. I'm going to snug that up. Make sure it's straight. You want the bracket lined up with the front edge of the, uh, it, not flush, but you know parallel with the front edge of the frame. Uh, just make sure everything's put together nice and neat. Snug it up. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Um, now at this point we can pop on the motor that's going to move the sensor stock on the front. So if you get another one of your geared steppers and you pop it down to the bracket, you can see it lines up pretty well with the holes. Um, now in this case, you either would have to drill all the way down through and out the other side to do through bolting. I didn't do that in this case. I'm going to sort of go against my own uh, advice. And I'm just going to put a, a short M3 bolt down through the motor bracket um, into the holes in the 3D printed part. Um, if yours are too loose for some reason, like um, you know differences in printer calibration, sometimes parts are slightly, you know they fit slightly differently. Um, if you have a bolt that's a little bit too loose in the hole, um, you can put a dab of hot glue down in there, and that just sort of builds up the space a little bit so that the threads have something to grip. Um, and uh, that should take care of it for you. <clears throat> Put this down in. Now we've got the motor mounted up here. Wires are ready to go. So the next thing is going to be to put the stepper drivers on. Um, next thing we're going to do is mount up the stepper drivers. Um, so they look like this. They've got a plug um, where the motor plugs in and then they've got uh, some input pins that are going to go back to the Raspberry Pi. And then there's power connections over here. Um, for uh, ease of assembly, I would try to make them all face the same direction. I like to put the um, little LEDs uh, in the front. These light up when the motors are running and can sometimes help with uh, troubleshooting. So if you mount these up, or rather if you line these up with the mount holes, um, it's going to look something like that. So they're all facing the same way and you should uh, see where all the holes um, line up to get the bolts through. So it's two on the side over here, two in the back over here, and then two again on the side over here. Um, we'll throw some hardware down through those. Um, these are probably M3 10 millimeter or maybe 12 millimeter. Oops, just dropped a bolt. Let's try that again. Put a bolt down through. And then down into the hole. And uh, if the holes are a little snug, then you might have to use the uh, Allen wrench to wind it down in. 
like that. Don't, you know, snug the hell out of these. Um, in this case, you're not likely to damage the board, but you just don't need to use excessive force here. Um, you just want it to not fall off. Um, you're not going for like uh, impact resistance. We're not sending this thing into orbit or anything like that. Um, so yeah, um, you can get bolts down through all of those. Throw nuts on the back, like down here, if you can keep from dropping the nuts. And hold those on. This one I didn't thread in all the way. I'll fix that from the other side. But anyway, repeat the process for all three, and then we will move on. All right, let's do a little cable management here. Um, before we start wiring this up, we're gonna wanna tuck some of these wires out of the way. Um, so if you've got these wires looped around the steppers like I do, um, you can tuck the connector through the wires once. You sort of get it knotted around the stepper. It helps hold it in place a little bit. And then you can plug the connector down in to the stepper. And that'll hold it in place. Do the same thing on this side. I've actually already knotted this one. Plug that down in. And then for the front, um, what I think works pretty well is you can wrap the wire around the stepper and then up through. And if you put just a little bit of tension on it, um, the wires for the stepper are stiff enough that they'll kind of stay in place. And then you can pop this down in. It's okay if the wires move around a little bit. We're just trying to reduce the clutter as much as reasonably possible um, because we're gonna run a bunch more wires connecting the Raspberry Pi to the stepper drivers. And if it turns into a rat's nest, it's just gonna be a little bit harder to, harder to work on. Um, okay, so before we go any further, there's a couple of wires that we need to make. Um, and uh, so it's gonna take a little bit of soldering, um, you know, which if you haven't done before is no big deal. But the first one we're gonna make um, is this thing right here. This is the one to three split that's going to be used for the power for the steppers. So the way that I'm going to make that is I'm going to take uh, one of these short female to female headers um, and basically I'm going to cut the ends off one side. I'm going to save them because I might use them for a different project. These uh, pin header or pin receiver things are kind of handy. Um, but I'm going to separate one of the wires. I'm going to cut the ends off and I'm going to solder these all together so I've got a three to one connector. So i get my wire cutters here, lop these off, like that. <clears throat> Strip these back a tiny bit. Adjust my wire strippers here. Strip these back just a tiny bit. that. So I've got, you know, maybe a quarter inch of uh, wire exposed there. <clears throat> twist these together. If I can get my fingers to work. Twist these together and get a blob of solder on there. Now if you have heat shrink, um, that can be handy to kind of protect these. You can also wrap them in electrical tape um, as long as you get a good solder joint on there. Let me set up the camera for the soldering and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so as far as soldering goes, it's not rocket surgery, as we say. But there's a couple things to keep in mind. Um, I apologize for the focus issues here, I'm working it real close. Um, get your soldering iron nice and hot. Get a little bit of fresh solder on the tip, that's going to help transfer the heat from the iron onto the wires. And then get on underneath the wires and heat them up with the melted solder first. And then add a little bit of solder to the joint from the other side. The whole idea is to get the wires hot enough that the solder melts. You're not heating the solder you know, with the iron in order to melt it in place like hot glue. You're heating the wire up to a temperature where when you bring in the solder, it, uh, it wicks into the, the fibers of the wire and makes a good joint. Um, if you heat the solder and just blob it in place, you get what's called a cold solder joint, which is a weak joint. It can be intermittent or it can break free. Um, if you heat the water, heat the water. If you heat the wire and then add the solder, 
um, you'll get a much better joint. So this is cooled for a few seconds. Just check that this is bonded well, that feels nice and strong. Um, so what I can do now is I'll slide the heat shrink down over that joint like that so it's kind of loosely covering it and then I'm just going to use the edge of the soldering iron which is also quite hot. I'm not using the tip, I don't want to foul the tip um, by getting um, you know melted heat shrink on there but by using the side of the iron um, it's nice and hot, it shrinks it down, covers up that joint. that. Now if we can get the camera to cooperate you can see I've got a nice three to one splitter here. We're going to use that in a few minutes. Now in a similar fashion, I don't need to kind of go through the whole process again, but I use the same technique to make this connector um, which has a JST four pin connector on one side. You can buy these online. Um, and these fit inside that laser uh, sensor mount point on the side. But you know, you don't have to use these as all, at all. You could cut the ends off these wires and solder them right onto the solder pads um, on the side here. Now, uh, in this build video, we're probably not going to get into the details of what all these solder pads are for, but just to give you enough information for you to finish the build, there's ground and 3.3 volt um, pin connector or uh, solder pads here and here. Um, those are providing power to the sensor. And then the other two are, are labeled, or two more, are labeled SDA and SEL. Those are the connectors that this is, um, that the Raspberry Pi are gonna use to communicate with the sensor. So if you're soldering wires directly on, um, cut down four wires, uh, one for ground, one for 3.3, one for SDA, and S one for SEL. Um, and just make note of the colors and um, you know which pads they attach to, because you're gonna need to know which wire is which when we're plugging it into the Raspberry Pi. In my case, I just took the little um, JST connector and soldered it on with heat shrink um, onto pin headers so that it's you know quick insert and quick release for me. By the way, if you do this and you want to figure out which pins on the connector go to which, um, you can solder this wire up, you can plug it in like that, and then using a multimeter, you can connect, for example, one probe of the multimeter to the ground connection and then check it on the end of all four of your wires until you uh, you get continuity, uh, or if your meter is one of those ones that beeps, you listen for the beep, and then you know that that wire connects to ground back on, on this connector. So you don't actually need to know which wire on the connector goes to which, you can figure it out for yourself by using a meter to check these pads against the end of the wires. Um, all right, so those are the wires you need to um, put together. We can get back to wiring the robot now. Okay, so we're moving on to the wiring now, and this is gonna get a little tight. Um, because this pin header right here on the Raspberry Pi where all the um, connections go in, um, you know, th there's not a whole lot of room to work there. Um, so I'm going to call out the pin numbers um, that we're going to use to connect in the stepper motors. And uh, I'll show them the best I can. But let me explain how the pin numbering works here. So if you can't see exactly what I'm doing, you can figure it out for yourself. Now, this edge over here um, so I'm inside the, on the inside of the board, that is to say nearest the little memory slot, um, the connector for the SD card. The pin closest to that, which is this one, inside on the board on my left is pin number one. Um, the pin numbering goes uh, pin number one on the inside, pin number two on the outside. Then it moves over one, pin number three, pin number four, pin number five, pin number six, pin number seven, pin number eight, all the way down. Um, for all of the pins. There's 40 of them. I'll, uh, I'll put a diagram up on the screen uh, as well, and that should help. But anyway, um, so when I uh, talk about pins, uh, for example, 31, 33, 35, and 37, which we're going to use for one of the steppers, um, that's going to be uh, these four pins here that are one in from the end of the pin header. Okay, So if you count it all the way down, 33, 35, 37, 39. Actually, I got that right. I'm sorry, 31, 33, 35, 37. That's going to leave the pin on the end uh, free on the inside. So it sounds a little confusing, but if you look at a pinout diagram, it's not that hard. Um, and we'll double check everything before we power this up. Okay? So what you're going to need to wire in the control wires for the steppers, right? So this power too, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, the control wires for the steppers, we're going to use these female-to-female -female jumpers. 
And the colors don't matter, um, but they will help you to figure out, uh, you know, which pins are which. So in this case, I'm using four different colors. Um, the first stepper, which uh, is going to be uh, this one over here, I'm going to call this one one. This one for the other wheel is going to be two, and then the one in the middle for the front sensor is going to be three. Okay. So I'm going to start with the stepper number one. This is going to go on seven, eleven, thirteen, and fifteen. Now those numbers are sort of arbitrary but uh, it's going to help you out a little bit if you stick with the numberings that I chose because um, if you change to other pins, which is perfectly valid, but if you change to other pins um, you're going to have to go into the code later on and modify things. So if you have a reason to do that, like if you're using this as part of another project, you got some other sensor connected on uh, other pins and you got to shift things around, go ahead and do that. But if you're doing a scratch build like I'm doing here, go ahead and match your pins up with mine and then you won't have to do code changes later. Um, okay, so this first group is going to be 7, 11, 13, and 15. So I'm just going to double check my counting here. So pin 1, 3, 5, 7 is where I've got my first pin. Then I skip 9, and then I go to 11, 13, and 15. So that means that I've got red on 7, orange on 11, yellow on 13, green on 15. And then with that same order, I can run this little group of pins over. I'm going to kind of hook the wire around so it takes up some of the slack. And then I'm going to keep them in the same order. So red, which went to pin 7, is going to be uh, pin 1 on the stepper board. Orange, which is pin 2, or rather the second pin. Orange, which was pin number 11, is going to go to pin 2 on the stepper. Yellow, which was pin 13. It's going to go to pin number three on the stepper. And then green, the last one, which was uh, pin 15. It's going to go to pin number four on the stepper. So those are the first set of control wires hooked up. Wire's a little messy. Kind of tuck this together. Might clean that up with a zip tie later to kind of hold it together, but for now that's fine. Um, okay, so for the next set, it's going to be uh, pins 31, 33, 35, and 37. So those are down on this end of the board. So I'm going to go and hook those same wires up in that order, and then I'm going to run those over to pins 1, 2, 3, and 4. So pin 31 on the Raspberry Pi is going to go to pin 1 on the stepper. Pin 33 on the Raspberry Pi is going to go to pin 2 on the stepper. Pin 35 on the Raspberry Pi is going to go to pin 3 on the stepper. And pin 37 on the Raspberry Pi is going to go to pin 4 on the stepper. I'm going to go and hook that up, and then move on to the next one. Pin's a little loose. I'm just going to use my pick to tighten that up a little bit. All right. Last set. <clears throat> I'm going to do pins 19, 21, 23, and 24. Now, these are going to count way out into the middle, so just do it carefully. Uh, we got 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. It's right here. So I'm going to put a wire down on pin 19. That's going to go to pin 1 on the stepper driver. Next wire is going to go to 21. That's going to go to pin 2 on the stepper driver. 23 is the next pin over on that same side. It's going to go to pin 3 on the stepper driver. Now pin 24, now if you remember I was describing for how the, before how the numbering works, the odd numbers are on my side of the board, the even numbers are on the other side of the board. So. 24 is right next to 23, but it's on the other side. So that pin is going to go out here on the even number pin side of the board, and that's going to go to pin 4 on the stepper driver. So those are all the control pins wired in. It's a little messy, but like I said, you can always clean up the wiring later.
Now while we're in here, let's take care of those power wires. Now um, on the Raspberry Pi, we've got um, uh, we've got several power connectors. Uh, we need a five volt connector to drive the uh, the stepper motors. Now that's going to be pin number two. So that's way over on this side of the board, closest to the memory slot, but on the outside of the board, pin number two. Refer back to that pinout diagram if you need to. So that was the single wire side of our splitter, and then the other three pins are going to go to the positive power connector on the stepper driver. Now if you look carefully at the board, from my perspective it's on the right hand side, but uh, it's basically next to the socketed uh, IC that's on the board. There's a little minus and a little plus on a pin. You're going to want to connect this wire to the plus side. So get that down on there, and then hook up the other two of them as well to the other stepper boards. And those are your positive power connections, all, on, all connected up there. And then you take three more female wires or female jumper uh, connectors there and connect these on to ground points on the Raspberry Pi and then to the negative points on the steppers. So unlike the uh, five volt power connections for the steppers, uh, the Raspberry Pi has plenty of ground connections. So we can use three separate wires to three separate grounds on the board and uh, have no problems. So on the Raspberry Pi side, I'm going to plug one into pin 9. Plug another one into pin 14. Just going to count down. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I realize you can't see this, but trust me. <laughs> Another one um, into pin 20. And then, uh, yeah, that gives us the three grounds that we need. So go ahead and hook these up to the negative power connectors on the steppers which are here, here, and here. So at this point, uh, despite a little bit of spaghetti wiring going on here, we've got all three stepper driver logic connectors, so that's 12 wires total hooked up, and we've got uh, uh, power and ground for each of the stepper drivers hooked up as well. All right, next we're gonna hook up the laser sensor. So at this point, you probably know which wires um, down here connect to which pads on the board. I'm using the, the plug connector, but uh, we can use a meter to figure out which one's ground, which one's 3.3, which one's SDA and SCL. <clears throat> I know in my case that uh, power for me is white, so I'm putting that. We need 3.3 power, 3.3 volt. So that's going to pin number one. My ground connection is going to go to pin number 14, because that's free. So let's count out here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Just right down there. A little tricky to get to. Use a pair of needle nose pliers if you have to. Do this stuff for a while though, you get pretty nimble fingers. And then the other two connections, the SDA connection goes to pin number three. And SCL goes to pin number five. And at this point, that end of the board's getting a little tight. Be patient, getting the wire down on there. There we go. So at this point, that should be all of our wiring done. Um, so we can get the sensor stock installed now. Now, 
this 3D printed part here um, will not come with a hole, so go ahead and drill that out with a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the hardware you're using to hold it in place, the set screw you're holding it in place. I'm using an M3 screw, um, so I used a, a drill bit that's a little bit smaller than the threads on an M3 screw, and then I started it, heated it with a soldering iron, and drove it in the rest of the way. Now, if you find that the fit of the socket is a little tight, you can drill it out with a drill bit. If it's a little loose, you can add a little dab of hot glue, and then before the glue hardens up, go ahead and pop it on the stepper motor. That'll take up some of that slack for you and uh, give you a nice tight fit. This is a little too tight for me. Sorry, had that going on sideways. Once you get that dab of hot glue in there, it only goes on one way. You can go ahead, tighten up that set screw gently. Doesn't have to exert a lot of force, just has to keep the stock from coming off. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Okay, so on the top here, we need to put our sensor mount. Looks like this. Sensor is gonna mount through these two mount holes. Um, I think the 3D printed part already has the hole in it. So you can wind uh, an M3 screw into that using the same technique that we talked about before. Heat it up to get a good fit. That'll pop in right on the end here. Just like that. So we'll get the sensor mount here, mount the sensor up to it, put a bolt in, get a nut started on the back, another bolt on the other side, like that. And then once we've got them started, just snug them up with the Allen wrench. Apologize for the focus. Let's back this up a little bit and see if that helps. So now we've got the set screw down low holding the stock in place. We've got the set screw up high holding the sensor mount on. Two bolts holding the sensor in place, and then we can just put a little zip tie right here to keep the wires nice and tidy. Excellent. All right, let's put the wheels on. All right, we're really in the home stretch now. <clears throat> All right, so we talked before about the little nut trap here. The nut trap is designed to trap the nut, as you might guess. The nut has to go in um, facing so that one of the points on the, the six-sided nut is facing up. Now, it can be a little fussy, kind of getting that in place. Um, so, you know, it can take a couple of tries, or, you know, another thing that works pretty well is to grab it with a pair of needle-nose pliers with one of the points facing up, like that, and then insert it down in. Sometimes that gives you a little bit better control. Um, if it starts kind of lean into the side a little bit, just pull it back out and put it back in. This is a fairly accurate representation of the struggle of getting a nut into the nut trap. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. There we go. Just give a little nudge with those needle nose pliers and then once you get it down in, the hole should line up fairly well. You can see on the side there. So uh, the length of the screw, again, not super critical. But if you put it on the end of an Allen wrench like that, you can wind it in. Now, you can wind it in just until it starts poking into the hole um, where the motor shaft is going to be, and then that's ready to go. Um, so go ahead and do the other one, and then we will pop them onto the robot. Okay, so once you get the nuts in the nut trap and the, and the bolt started there, um, line it up so that the bolt, once you tighten it, is going to be pressing against one of the flats on the stepper motor. Line that up. And you might want to rotate the wheel around so that it's accessible. So in 
the position that I had it originally, I was gonna be running into one of the mounting bolts. So I'm just gonna flip it around and then you can sneak in with your, your Allen wrench and get at the head of that bolt to tighten it up. Now, what you wanna to try to do is hold the wheel in a way that is uh, parallel to the side of the motor frame. If you get it on crooked, it's not gonna rotate, uh, you know, it's not gonna rotate straight. So take a little bit of time. Um, there's a few things that it can run into. Um, make sure you've got the wheel on the shaft enough that it gets a good grip, um, but not so tight that the wheel is rubbing up against anything. And, um, you know, just take your time and make sure it's on there nice and straight. That looks pretty good for that side. I'll pop this one on over here. Again, just sort of take my time. Sort of get it roughly in position. Tweak it a little bit, nudge it around, get it lined up. And then snug it down. All right, there's one more thing we haven't talked about yet, which is how we're gonna power the robot. Now there's a lot of options. If you're uh, only gonna have this robot working on your desk for the near future, you can just plug it into the wall with a micro USB um, cable and a, a USB charger, or you can run it on a, like a portable battery pack. But um, if you're gonna train this thing, if you're gonna be using it for machine learning and reinforcement learning, you need this thing to be mobile. You gotta be able to drive it around. So I'm using a little two cell uh, LiPo battery. This is the kind of thing you use in like RC planes and quadcopters. Um, and it's got the high power connection here and then the balance charger. Now I'm using this, which is a battery eliminator circuit. These are used in RC planes to power the onboard electronics. Um, and so if you plug this in uh, to the battery, then this gives you five volts, uh, which is perfect for running the Raspberry Pi with the motors. So I got this on Amazon. Uh, they come in all shapes and sizes. And for the power input, I soldered on a little balance charger uh, connection. So I can just plug this right into the balance charge um, connector on the LiPo. So bundle this up, hold this with a little piece of tape kind of keep all the parts together. Now, on the robot, you may have noticed there's this little spot back here and there's a little flange. This is to give you a spot to put the battery uh, where it's out of the way, um, but also supported. You see there's enough room here for this to sit. Uh, it's not gonna fall off the back because of this, this ridge. Um, so you can tuck it in there, use a little piece of double-sided tape um, to hold the battery in place, and that's not going anywhere. Now, on the other end of the battery eliminator circuit is this little two-pin connector. Uh, if yours doesn't come with one, you can solder on a couple of little pin connectors like the ones we cut off when we were making the power splitter. But with the positive and negative right next to each other here, we've left um, pins um, four and six on the Raspberry Pi, which are right next to each other, uh, which are a positive and negative uh, power connector. So the pin number four is a five volt connector and that's usually used to use to let the Raspberry Pi power something else, but the power rail is all connected together. So you can feed five volts in to um, pin number four and that'll power the Raspberry Pi just as if you had powered it through the, the USB plug back here. So make sure you get the polarity right, but you can go on in and plug this little connector into the Raspberry Pi so that the red wire is on pin number four and the black wire is on pin number six. And what that'll do, if I can get that in there, that'll power up the Raspberry Pi and you will be mobile. You will be ready to go <clears throat> uh, to start working on uh, your robot powered by the battery. And that's it, we're all together. Mine's powered up, it's ready to go, ready for me to start programming it. Um, if you have any trouble, uh, you know how to get a hold of us. Email address down in the video description, you can go to the Lois Lab website. Um, you know, shoot us an email, ask us questions, we're happy to help. Um, we wanna see you have fun with this and, and be successful. So that's it, we'll talk to you soon.